Ah, morning everyone. Hope you're all fine and absolutely dandy as you bloody well should be. I'm here to have a look at this Kuwait's KM601S multimeter. Now I've had this now for a couple, well more than a couple of weeks, about three weeks, and I've been using it. And I can tell you, it's bloody good. <laughs> I'm, t I'm actually really surprised with how good it is. Um, I'm beginning to learn that this Kowitz is a bloody good brand, to be honest with you. When they approached me the first time, and they sent me this little malt, little little meter here, this KM201, and there was another one that I've got in the drawer, battery tester and all that. I thought this is pretty good, but then they sent me this, and I've been using it, and it's really, well, it's just, it's everything you need in one meter, to be honest with you. So let's go and have a, put it on the bench, Get it out of the box because I put it all back in the box so you can see how it comes when you buy it. And uh, we'll go through it all and see what it's all like. All right, so we'll stick it on this bench here because it's a bit better to look at. So I always think it's very important that we have a look at the box on anything that you buy because, as I always say, companies do spend time and money. They have a design team to design a box, they make the box, you know, there's money and just time in a box. So it's always worth looking at it and appreciating it. A lot of people just rip them open and put them in the bin, but I think that's a shame. So what have we got on the box? We've got the, the Smart Digital Multimeter, the model number, obviously, the KM601S. Little picture from the front, side, and the back. Some information on the company and a oh, rubbish there. Um, bits on the side. Voltage, resistance, capacitance, and current. Well, it's pretty much four things that it does. Not a lot on that side, and obviously there's a picture of the meter. Very nice. It's actually a nice box. And when you open it up, this is exactly what you met with. Kawits. Comes in, the meter itself comes in this really cool little case. Mine's a little bit dirty because I've been taking it out and about and using it. And you also get in the a really thick manual. It's in different languages, so it's not all in English. So you have got some different languages there. So it's not all about how to use the meter in English, but there's a lot of information in here and uh, we'll go through some of it in a minute. And that's the box. So Personally, I like to keep boxes. I know, I know some of you are thinking, why do you keep a bloody box for? Well, I'll put this box in and say, put it in the loft because in the future, if I ever need the box, say if I move house or whatever, I can put everything back in its box and everything's going to be safe. So I always keep boxes. Uh, maybe I'm just a weirdo, I don't know. Anyway, nice case. This really is a nice case. It's an easy to open case. You've got a little handle there if you wanted to hold it. Nice zip. As I say, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed with how this product is. I wasn't expecting it to be like this. I thought it's just... It's gone beyond my expectations, if I'm completely honest. <clears throat> so, if I just do that, this is pretty much how it comes when you buy it. Little felt, uh, little uh, elastic strap to keep your meter in. You've got a little pocket on the side. And there's your probes. And, uh, you know, these ones, pretty good. Both of them, you've got... You can take that off because sometimes you do need a little bit of extra length. These are a thousand volts, cat two rated to, max ten amps apparently. You got your charging cable. Now, why do we have a charging cable? This is the bit that I like probably the most. It's really handy. It's got a built-in battery in it. Now, every multimeter, I know some of you probably buy really, really expensive meters for your job or whatever, which is fair enough. They probably have built-in batteries these days. But for the type of meter that I use, you know, your ordinary multimeter, you have to stick 9-volt batteries in them, you know, even the, even the more expensive ones that I do own. You have to put a 9-volt battery in them. So the fact that this has got a built-in lithium battery is just incredibly handy. I don't know what capacity the battery is, mind you. I didn't look that up, but it's got a built-in battery. It's got a little light on the back, a little torch, really handy, because a couple of times I dropped me uh, little 
um, screwdriver bit off of the end of my screwdriver. <sighs> and I dropped it down an engine. And I was looking, I thought, oh, I've got a torch on the back of my meter. Happy days. And I was looking around because it was pitch black because it was dark. It's winter here in, uh, in England. So it's dark at four o'clock in the afternoon. So I was looking around and I managed to find my little bit with this torch. So it come in massively handy. So we've got a charging cable to charge up your meter. You've also got these little things. These come in when you first buy it. These little things, they're in there. And you just take them out. I haven't bothered putting them back in again because I use, I've been using this nearly every day, actually. Um, I've found wires that I was looking for in camper vans. I've worked out switches. I've done a couple of circuit boards, capacitors, tested a load of resistance and all kinds with this meter. And um, yeah, it's good. It's thermometer or temperature probe because it reads temperatures as well. So that's very, very handy. So you can just plug that in. Bob's your uncle, you know what the temperature is. But I'll show you in a minute, you don't always need that. That's only if you want to stick it in somewhere and find a temperature. So that's what you get. A very nice little case. Your probes, your charging cable. The chart, the end of it, slightly annoying that the end of it is one of them, mind you. It would be nice if it was like a USB-C or that other one I don't know the name of. Because then, if you did happen to lose this, you could at least use a different cable that you might already have. Whereas with it being this type, it's a bit unique, really. I mean, I, this is the only one of these I've got. So if I did lose this cable, I wouldn't be able to charge this up. I'd probably have to go and buy another one. But that's the only problem I've got so far with it. The, the the type of cable on the back of it as you would expect from most meters you've got a little stand so that you can see you know you can stand it up sometimes it's difficult to you might be trying to probe stuff with both hands and your meat is flopping around walking away so you just stand it up happy days now you can beep, 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 and away you go so you got your charging port at the top there it's quite a nice place for it to be honest nice great big on button Turn it on, look, and, and there we go. We're in auto mode, and there's the temperature. It's reading the temperature now, where we are right now. It's seven degrees Celsius. That's what the temperature is right now. It's in auto mode to start with, and you've got all the different functions. You've got, it, it, when you first turn it on, it, it's already in auto mode, but you can do that, and you can turn it into... Oh, you did you did do that anyway there we go sorry i thought you had to hold it i must say i will say now i've been using this every day but i haven't used every single um thing that it can do every single function i haven't used every single function i've done uh capacitance i've done resistance i've done ac and dc voltage testing um the temperature you use every day anyway. Uh, I've used a light. So yeah, there's loads of other things that it can do that I haven't yet had any reason to use. Um, but anyway, so you can go through the different functions by pressing that. So you can, at the moment we're on um, resistance, you go there, man, look, we're in manual mode now. You go all the way through, DC, AC, Hertz, temperature, Live, that's another thing, really handy that it does. It can test, it's non-contact voltage. So you, you, you can test whether you've got a live wire without even touching the live wire. Very handy that it can do that. Amps, blah, blah, blah. It's telling me to put the leads on, look. And that's another thing I wanted to show you. Because I haven't actually got the leads attached, it tells me when I need to put them in, it flashes. It's like, come on, put the leads in. Watch, watch, watch them flash, ready, when I go through them functions. Look, look, it's telling me what ones I need to plug in for what function. So that's really cool, because if you are not sure what plugs you need to plug your cables into, they're all going that one so far. <laughs> now, them ones need to be in that one. That's really good. I like that function. I really like that function because, you know, when you're, when you're beginning, you've got a little red light there probably telling you that you ain't got something plugged in. When you're sort of learning, you do, I mean, even these days I do forget, sometimes I plug the wrong lead, the, the lead in the wrong bloody one. And I'm sitting there probing and I'm thinking, why, why is nothing happening? 
And then I look at it again and go, oh, what's an idiot? I put the wrong so I take it out, put it in the right one, and away we go. But if you've got a little light flashing at you, that's, you know, it just reminds you. The only thing is that I've noticed, a bit of a, it's a, a small problem for me personally. There's no battery symbol to tell you how much charge you've got left. The only the only time the battery symbol comes up is when you stick it on charge and the little battery comes up. I haven't found a way for it to show me how much battery's left. Um, so that's a bit of a problem because it's nice to know how much battery you've got left. It probably might even be a way. I just haven't found it yet. But at the moment, I haven't found out how to do it. As far as the instruction manual goes, from what I've been reading of it, it's in really good English. The grammar and punctuation is good, which is what you want. Because a lot of the time, when you've got a manual which is written in a country, you know, which is not, which doesn't speak English, sometimes the translation can be a little bit lost and things aren't quite explained properly. They use the wrong words, for example. But this is really good from what I've seen. Um, you know, Press and hold the button for two seconds to turn on, off the meter. See, that's perfect. Power is in smart mode by default. Press the button to manual mode. Then press again to switch measurement modes. Press and hold the key for about two seconds to return to the smart auto mode. For me, you know, it's perfect. You can read it perfectly. It tells you everything you need to know. I might even come across how to check the battery while I'm reading this. Now, terminal introductions, and it tells you about all the terminals there. These are these little buttons along the bottom there. The buttons, the plugs along the bottom there. It tells you what they do and when you need to use them. Smart measurement tells you all about smart measurements. Warning, do not measure voltages higher than DC 1000 volts or AC 750 volts, which can damage the meter. So that's something I should point out, as we've obviously seen. It's rated to 1,000 DC volts and 750 AC volts, which, to be honest, well, at least for things I do, that's more than enough. If you're measuring any more than that, I'd say you need to go and buy a specialist meter. You know what I mean? For just general things, like what I do, playing around with cars, the odd electric fence now and again, um, which can go into thousands and thousands of volts, but the ones that I play around with, the electric fences that I play around with, I know they're not, so I just stick the meter on, it tells me if the fence is on or not, rather than me touching it with my finger. Um, yeah, playing with cars, even in your house, you can use it to measure voltages in your house, because we have 240 volt AC in, in this country, so 750 is more than ample. Manual measurement um, modes, yeah, everything you need to know is in here. It's really comprehensive instruction book. Resistance measurements. It tells you how to do everything you need to do. And I will admit, I haven't read every single page. I've just gone through and had a little bit of a read-up so that I know what this thing does and to make sure I'm using it properly so I can give an accurate review of my opinion which is bloody good. So, you lot, there we go. I really recommend, if you're looking for a new multimeter, rather than going around and just having a look and getting one of these ones, go and have a look on the Koweits website and see if you fancy getting one of these. I recommend this one, or if you do want a smaller one, go and have a look at this one. It's just as good, but this one does everything that you'd want it to do. And um, with that built-in battery, I think that's great because... I know you've got to charge it up, but sometimes it's just, it's a pain, you know, you, with these ones, you stick nine volt batteries in them, and, you know, you, you might be out and about, even these ones don't tell you how much battery power you got left, you know, many, many times I've gone out to a car or a truck or something I've had to go and do some work on, got my multimeter out to do some testing, and it's gone flat, well, I haven't got any nine volt batteries with me, so then I've had to go down to a shop, buy a nine volt battery and put it in but if you're out and about with this one and it goes flat 
as long as you've got your case with you, obviously, you've got your charging cable, you can plug it into your cigarette lighter in your car, you know, charge it up a little bit. You can, if you've got a power bank, you can plug this into your power bank, charge up your meter, you know, 10 minutes, or even plug it in and use it while it's charging. I can't see any reason why you can't do that. So it's a whole lot more convenient than these ones, the old style, where you had to put a nine volt battery in them. <clears throat> so I definitely recommend this. Where's the box gone? I've lost the box, there it is. I definitely recommend it. And that's that's honest, that is as, as honest as they get. Um, yeah, bloody brilliant meter, so. Any link that you're gonna need will be in the description of this video. And I want you to put in the comments as well. I really encourage you, where in the world are you from? Yeah, where are you in the world? And have you got one of these? If you've got one, put in the comments what you think of it. Do you agree with me that this is, for what it is, it's great. Or maybe you disagree. Put that in the comments as well, and we can discuss the pros and the cons of this meter. And if you're thinking of getting one, or if you've just gone and bought one, based off of this video, put that in the comments as well, because I'd love to hear. If I've helped somebody go and buy themselves a really decent multimeter to do their work or for their hobby or whatever it is they want to use it for, I want to know about it because that's great. Thanks for watching you lot. Merry Christmas, because it is Christmas, and I hope you have a great one, and I hope you just enjoy yourself and love life. Treat people nicely. Treat people how you'd like to be treated. And we should have a nice, happy life. Cheerio, you lot. All the best. Take care.